Tonight, in this abandoned warehouse, this magician is going to break his solemn code and expose magic's biggest secrets. He'll reveal the incredible secrets behind making a 65,000-pound truck disappear. A death-defying escape. Slicing a woman in two with a buzzsaw. Vanishing a beautiful girl into thin air. Levitating a woman on the bristles of a broom. And for the first time, he'll reveal how a man could survive being frozen for a week in a block of ice. All tonight on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. The begins by powering up the stainless steel blade of an industrial buzzsaw. As usual, we'll begin by showing you the illusion as it is performed. Then we'll reveal the secrets. To protect the identity of the magician, he's not using his regular assistants, so we can show you their faces. And here comes another one of his beautiful assistants now. All dressed up and only one place to go. But don't get ahead of me. In order to be sawn in half, she'll need a little convincing. A magic spell should do it. And just to make sure she doesn't wake up and run away, her feet will be secured in place with heavy-duty padlocks. We should remind you that this trick is very dangerous. Do not attempt it or any of tonight's illusions at home. With her feet locked in place, the ladies then shackle her wrist to the table. Snap. Fun girls. They really know how to have a good time. But they're gonna leave the dirty work to the magician. Usually the woman on the table is covered with a box. This time, you'll see the sharp stainless steel blade cut right through her body. Uh-oh, Sleeping Beauty is awake. Better use some more magic. This looks like it could be painful. Too late, the magician's got places to go and people to saw. Yikes, he's actually cutting right through her. Straight up the middle, that's gotta hurt. The girls rush in to help her out of her chains, like it matters now. How do you like that? She's none too worse for wear. Although her outfit's now a tasteful two-piece. That's how you saw a woman in two. Now let's find out the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician demonstrates that the saw blade is real. It is. Our lovely assistant enters, never looking lovelier. She's put into a bogus trance by the magician and placed on the table. Now's when the magic happens. Concealed on the tabletop is a trap door that opens to reveal a secret compartment inside. As the assistant is lowered onto the table, her midsection drops down into the compartment. But with her body hidden safe inside the table, how does she appear to lay flat on top of the bench? When the assistant enters, she's wearing a specially designed form-fitting body cast made of super thin fiberglass hidden under her dress. Some cast, some body. The false body has been pre-cut to allow the saw blade to pass right through it. When the girl is placed on the table, her body drops through the trap door and out of the phony form and fake dress. The fiberglass form maintains her body's shape underneath the dress, and it is this fake form that is really cut by the saw. Looks convincing to me. 
The assistants distract us as they lock the restraints in place. Notice that one of the assistants appears to be doing something else behind the table. What you don't see is that she is really sliding in a steel plate, safely separating the assistant from the form and protecting her from the very real blade. Once everything is in place, the magician starts the saw and slices through his pretty victim like a hot knife through butter. And that's really how to saw a woman in two. For his next illusion, the magician will attempt to make one of his lovely assistants go away. Although I'm not quite sure why. Is it her? No, it's this one. She seems ready, willing, and certainly able. First, a couple of dance moves to remind him of what he's going to be missing when she's gone. Maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. Who else is going to give him a free table dance? Here come the other girls. I sense there's magic in the air. And just like that, she's vanished. What a shame. But here's how he did it. When the illusion begins, the magician beckons his assistant to perform a sultry dance for him atop this table. This has absolutely nothing to do with the trick, but I wanted to see it again anyway. There are actually two beautiful assistants who make this trick work. One on the table, and one hiding behind the back wall, who's waiting for her cue. Although you may not see it, the secret to this trick is right before your eyes. From this angle, you can see that the table actually rests on top of a triangular compartment concealed on all sides by mirrors. These mirrors reflect the striped walls and checkerboard floor, making the compartment virtually invisible. Hidden in the top of the compartment is a trap door, also concealed by a mirror. Remember the beautiful assistant hiding backstage? She operates the trap door. How's that for convenient? The sexy dancers enter with the silk and raise it up. At that moment, the secret door is slid open. When the silk is raised a second time, the girl on the table jumps back into the opening. Going down. Watch again. The door opens, she drops in, and the assistant shuts her trap, so to speak. She's gone in a flash. This really is the oldest trick in the book. Coming up, how does a woman float on the bristles of an ordinary broom, or a 65,000 pound truck vanish into thin air? And could anyone really survive for seven days in a frozen block of ice? The secrets when we return. Now the magician will attempt one of the classics of magic, suspending a woman in midair on the bristles of an ordinary broom. But these are no ordinary cleaning ladies. Trust me, they don't do windows either. But I'm not complaining. Nice broom work, ladies. Wonder what they could do with a vacuum. The assistants place their brooms into the platform and we're ready for the magic to begin. Here comes the magician and his next victim right on cue. The rose is a nice touch. They say girls really fall for flowers. Let's hope she doesn't fall for him, then to the floor. She's up, and she's good. Must eat a well-balanced diet. There goes one broom. Doesn't look too comfortable. Now for number two. Nothing below and nothing above. And that's how you sweep a woman off her feet, magically.
But since there's no such thing as magic, let's find out the secrets. The assistants enter and place the brooms into holes cut in the floor. No magic there. They wave their hands over the bristles to show that the brooms are ordinary. But looks can be deceiving. Examine this broom more closely and you'll see that the bristles actually conceal a steel pipe with a hole in the top. Who says showbiz isn't glamorous? But how does our lovely assistant use that pipe to float parallel to the floor? Her long black gown covers more than a fabulous figure. It contains the secret. Hidden beneath her dress is a specially fitted harness that is designed to support her full weight. Starting to catch on? Under her right arm is a special connector that fits inside the top of the hollow steel pipe. Not exactly high fashion. As the lovely lady steps up next to the broom, another assistant is hidden behind her. The audience can't see as this girl quickly guides the connector into the pipe. Once it's securely in place, the magician simply picks the girl up and over the brooms. And the magical harness does all the heavy lifting. Here's how the trick and the girl would look without the dress. When you see this illusion without the cover of the gown, it doesn't look quite so magical, does it? A trick so simple, even a child could do it. It was said that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, believed that the great Houdini could dematerialize and pass through solid objects. Let's see if he was right. In this case, the magician will be traveling through the object. No, he's not going to take one last look at his costume before the trip. That big mirror is all part of the trick. Once again, so are the girls. The magician begins by examining a magical portal. There's a split in the center of the portal that allows him to pass his hand through. See? Apparently the opening works on both sides. Nice job, girls. The panel is secured in place over one side of the mirror. This mirror has two faces, so the magician calls for another panel. Yep, this one has a split, too. Can you guess what happens next? That's right, the second panel is secured in place. The magician takes one last look behind the mirror. There he goes with those magic gestures again. It won't be long now. There he is, but that was supposed to be solid plate glass. Yet his hand is moving straight through. How's that for a dramatic entrance? A quick tap on the mirror to prove it's still there, and the illusion is complete. How did he do it? It's easier than you think. As the trick begins, the magician shows us the magic portal that will allow him to walk through the mirror. The girls are kind enough to show us the front and back of the portal, and it is put into place. The mirror is spun around, and the second portal is brought out. This time, the magician shows us the front, but not the back. Here's why. As we look behind this portal, we see that there are two secret panels hidden by the fabric. A hole cut in the center gives the magician just enough space to slide his hand through, making this portal appear as innocent as the first. But when the panels are slid out from behind the cloth, we see that they are actually two mirrors. They are the key to this illusion. This second portal is locked into place just like the first, and the magician walks around behind the mirror. He pretends to cast a magical spell on the portal. This misdirection gives our assistants time to slide the two mirrored panels out of the portal and lock them into place. 
Watch again closely and you can see that the frame of the large mirror contains hidden tracks that will hold the two panels firmly in place. Just like the sliding doors at home, except for the girls. The camera moves around to the front and it looks like we are seeing the original mirror. Instead, what we really see are the two fake mirror panels separated by the black fabric portal. Meanwhile, behind the mirror, the magician grabs onto a secret handle and pulls the big mirror away from its frame. It's actually hinged like a door. Now all that stands in his way is the fabric portal on the mirror's front side. As the magician makes his dramatic move through the portal, the assistant standing behind the mirror closes it behind him. Then she makes her way around to the front for the big finish, walking through a mirror. As simple as that, once you know the secret. Coming up, we reveal the secret to making a giant truck disappear and how to survive a week in a solid block of ice. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed, returns. Next, the magician will attempt something you've seen many times on TV, vanishing a large object into thin air. If you guessed the 65,000 pound dump truck, you're right. Of course, any big object will do, like an airplane or a tank. But I think this truck will do the trick. Those girls keep popping up right when he needs them. Lucky guy. Watch that first step, Masked Man. The floor is solid concrete. No trap door down there. Just in case you're wondering, this truck is the real deal. It's 35 feet long and 13 feet high. I guess he wants us to get a good look at the truck. If the trick works, it won't be around for long. And just to make sure that it doesn't vanish too soon, the magician has something else up his sleeve. The truck is enclosed in this 37 by 20 foot steel cage. The cage itself weighs a ton, two tons to be exact. The doors of the cage are closed tight, then chained to the front of the truck with a bulletproof padlock. He couldn't break it open if he tried. The magician checks out the steel enclosure to make sure there are no secret panels. It's solid, all right, and it surrounds the truck on all sides. Trust me, there's no way for the truck to leave the enclosure. Maybe he'll have to use some real magic to make it go away. Let's see him try. Time for the magic. First, a group of spectators is invited to surround the cage and make sure there's no funny business. But this guy is not exactly a bundle of laughs. Since they were chosen at random, you can bet nothing will get past them. They'll witness the magic up close and personal, just like the audience members at a live stage show. Places, please. Curtain coming down in a few seconds. The spectators take one last look at the massive machine. A little wave and the curtain falls. See you later. They join hands and form a human chain around the cage. This is teamwork. They're making it tough for the magician to work his magic. Now there's really no way out. Or is there? A little more conjuring on the part of the magician and the entire box begins to rise. I guess the only way out is up. Wow, I have to admit it, it's impressive so far. What's going on behind that sheet? If you want the answers, just imagine how they feel. So close, and yet so far. Some more magic and the cage rises right off the ground. Remember, the truck weighs 65,000 pounds and there's no way he could lift it straight up, even with a crane. 
Besides, nobody said anything about a floating truck. Let's just see what's happening here. There's no sign of the vehicle underneath. But where is it? Again, the floor is solid concrete, so don't look for any trap doors or hidden elevators. Is it really gone? The suspense is killing me. Yet another magical wave and... Voila. That truck is gone goodbye. And just to prove it, the magician reunites with his collection of cuties. As long as they're around, I can't say that I miss the truck. But it's gone without a trace. Nice trick, Magic Man. Now show us where it really went. How did the magician make this 65,000 pound truck levitate high in the air, then vanish in the blink of an eye? He didn't. Here's what really happened. When the trick begins, the magician gives us a tour of the massive truck. Yes, the truck is real, and it is very heavy. But the two lovely assistants aren't the only magical helpers hiding in the shadows. Cleverly concealed in the truck's payload are stagehands. No, they're not taking a rest. They're waiting to go to work. Hey, guys. The magician climbs up onto the truck's cab and waves his hand inside. Whenever a magician goes out of his way to show you that there's nothing unusual going on, there always is. From this angle, we see the truck's driver is hiding inside. That's one way to avoid a speeding ticket. The magician exits the steel cage, the doors are closed, and the chain is padlocked. It's legit. That door will not be opened again, at least until the stagehands want to come out and go home. Then the magician takes us on a walk around the cage, showing us that it completely encloses the truck. He calls in the witnesses, and they surround the truck to form a human barricade. With a magical wave of his hands, the giant silk curtain is dropped, covering the cage. As soon as they are hidden from view, the driver and stagehands spring into action, climbing out of the truck and moving into position around the perimeter of the cage. Funny, they usually don't work this fast when they're being watched. Outside the cage, the witnesses move in closer and join hands so that nothing can get past them. But something does. If these spectators look bored to you, it's probably because they've done this trick many times before. Although they've been presented to you as randomly chosen witnesses, they're actually part of the illusion. In fact, they're on the payroll and always help the magician perform this big trick. As the magician appears to make the silk rise, inside the cage, the stagehands make their move. Upon closer inspection, you can see that the entire cage is on wheels, and it is actually welded to the back of the truck. The movement of the fabric and the spinning lights disguise the movement of the truck as it begins to roll backwards. But how does the cage move without taking the curtain with it? Closer examination reveals that the silk drape is not connected to the cage as it appeared. It's actually hung from a steel frame supported by beams and lifted by motors and cables. The cables are painted black and hung from the ceiling high above the trunk. When the curtain rises, it is actually lifting off and away from the cage, allowing the cage and truck to slip out the back. Behind the truck, the black backdrop slides open. Our phony witnesses move out of the way, and the cage and truck roll out. The deception is still hidden from view by the white silk, which continues to rise. The truck must be backed out carefully so that its movement is not visible from the outside. But what about all that noise the truck makes? The witnesses are doing a good job pretending that it's perfectly quiet. This is why big tricks like this are only seen on TV and never in front of a real live audience. Once the truck is clear of the stage, the witnesses move back into place. The black backdrop is closed, and the magician is ready for his dramatic finale. The magician levitates the silk one last time, supposedly showing us that the truck is suspended in midair. But now we know better. With a mystical wave, the silk is released from the steel frame and it floats to the ground almost magically. The witnesses act dumbfounded and amazed, and the truck has vanished. Pretty good trick.
pretty simple solution. Coming up, the secret behind a death-defying escape. And the trick to surviving a week in a solid block of ice. When Magic's Biggest Secrets, finally revealed, returns. Next, the magician attempts a dangerous, death-defying escape called the Cage of Doom. Although the dancers look pretty dangerous, too. Of course, it wouldn't be a daring escape without a bevy of beautiful dancing girls. Remember, if you were thinking you can figure out the magician's secret identity by checking out the girls, don't bother. At least, not for that reason. They're not his usual assistants. Usual or not, they look okay to me. This is one of the most dangerous escapes ever performed, and even though you'll find out how it's done if he makes it out alive, do not attempt this or any of tonight's illusions at home. Don't forget, beneath that mask is a professional. The object of this trick is to escape from his solid steel cage before the magician finds himself the main ingredient in a spike sandwich. The spikes are each three feet long and razor sharp. The cage is forged of welded steel, and the only thing that keeps the spikes from slamming together is this 1,000-pound weight. When the weight drops, the spikes are released and will go crashing into the cage. Enough of the grand tour. Let's lock him up and throw away the key. First, a pair of iron wrist shackles, always a nice accessory. Padlocked and guaranteed escape-proof. Once inside the cage, another lock ensures that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. So long, ladies. Now to heat things up. It's getting warm in here. From the ceremonial passing of the torch to the equally ceremonial lighting of the rope, when it burns through, bye-bye wait, hello spikes. You didn't expect the magician to show us everything right away, did you? Lucky for us, we can see exactly what he's doing inside the cage. Looks like he's got the shackles off. Now to get out of the cage before he's permanently perforated. That rope has burned almost all the way through. Oops. There go the spikes. Wait, there he is, safe and sound. Sorry, Magic fans. You knew we couldn't let him get totally smashed, at least not before we got some more secrets out of him. So how did the Magician manage to escape a split second before getting stuck in the ultimate sticky situation? Here are the secrets. First, the Magician is cuffed in shackles shoved into the cage, and the door is locked. The lock on the cage is real, all right, but he's not worried. He's not planning on using the front door. The handcuffs are a different story. Their locks are also real, but the secret lies in the hinges. Once the magician is out of view, he simply slips a thin pin out of the hinge, and the cuffs pop right off. But if the front door to the cage is locked, how does he escape? That giant sheet of white silk fabric should be your first clue. From behind, you can see that the moment the cloth is dropped, the magician quickly slips out the back through a secret panel. Timing here is critical, since once the sheet drops, it takes only a split second before a special backlight is turned on. Let's watch it again from the front and the back. The cloth drops, and the magician makes a quick exit, but his silhouette creates the illusion that he's still in the cage and still struggling to get out. He's doing a pretty good acting job, too, because the audience falls for it. But what really controls those very real, very sharp steel spikes? The magician flips a secret switch hidden behind the base of the cage. The switch lets a stagehand who's hiding in the wings know that it's okay to send the spikes flying. 
Watch closely during the trick and you'll see him kick the switch. Once the signal is given, the stagehand releases the spikes. At the same moment, the rear spotlight is turned off and our agile magician uses the bars of the cage like a ladder. How's that for climbing your way to the top? It's easy when you know the secrets. And they call this magic? This next trick is about as creepy as they come. It all centers around this circular seance table. We get it, there's nothing above and nothing below. Let's get this party started. Our lovely assistants enter and prepare to pull up a seat. But there's no poker in the cards for them. Some mystical movements and fancy finger work, and it's time to get down to business. Looks like the girls are really getting into it. Lucky for him, they're very hands-on. They could put a spell on me any day. Concentrate, fingers flat on the table, and what's this? They're certainly getting a rise out of it. And another. But this table hopping is a bit too much for them to take. How do you like that? He's a furniture mover. Now even a magician looks like he's having a hard time keeping it down. Ah, gently. They say to make it in this business, you have to keep your feet on the ground. Good advice. Not a bad trick, unless you know the secret. Many magicians would like you to believe that they have supernatural powers. I can assure you that they don't. The magician begins the illusion by showing us that the table has no strings or mirrors, and there's nothing hidden in his hands. Although his hands are empty, what you don't see is that hidden up each sleeve is a steel rod that's held in place by a padded Velcro strap. The steel rods slip out with a flick of the wrist and can support the table, which is made of lightweight balsa wood. As the assistants distract us by taking their seats, the magician makes what looks like just another magical gesture. As he shakes his arms, he is actually causing the rods to slide out and lock into place. Pretty snappy. Hidden in the side of the table are two holes into which the rods fit perfectly. Trust me, it's not a coincidence. During the illusion, the assistants provide a little more delightful distraction, and the magician slips the rods into place. All that's left to do is for the magician to lift the table and use his acting skills to convince us that it's about to float away. But we won't get fooled again, now that we know the secrets. Coming up, you've seen it on TV. Now the magician exposes the secrets to survive being frozen in a block of ice when magic's biggest secrets returns. The magician is trying to cheat death once again. This time while being frozen inside a block of ice for seven days without food, water, or rest. But how did he get in there? Let's take a look. Eight days ago, 45 slabs of ice, 300 pounds each, are painstakingly cut and stacked by master ice sculptors to form a bone-chilling chamber. This will be the magician's home for the next week. He's been preparing for this stunt for months using yoga techniques to slow his breathing and heart rate. And he's tried to acclimate his body to cold temperatures. Let's hope he's got enough practice. The surface is treated with a coating of dry ice to bring its temperature down below freezing and to ensure that the chamber won't melt too quickly. 24 hours later, looks like we're ready to go. It's the first day, and the magician examines the fate that awaits him. Will he back out? 
It's too late to think about that now. The world is watching to see if he makes it, and then find out how he pulled it off. He climbs up to examine his icy tomb. Check out that black wire on the chamber. It's connected to a tiny camera that has been frozen into the ice. This view will show us the inside of the cube at all times. Time to close up shop. A quick sip of hot coffee. This will be the last liquid he'll drink for a week. An assistant connects a cable to a wire in the magician's sleeve. This wire runs through his clothing to monitors on his body so we'll know if something goes wrong. The heart rate readings are normal, but that will change. You can bet on it. It's now or never. The massive front slab is slowly pushed into place. Again, this is a very perilous illusion. Between the freezing temperatures and the crushing weight of the ice, the magician's life is in real danger. Do not attempt anything like this at home. The ice chamber is sealed shut. The workers quickly pack the gaps with more slabs and more dry ice. The dry ice fuses all the pieces to form one giant cube. Since the walls of the chamber are two feet thick, there's no quick way out in the event of an emergency. In order to free the magician, workers will have to carefully cut a hole in the side of the cube. It's getting cold in there, but he'll have to get used to it. There's a week to go, and he's just getting started. It's the second day and much colder in the chamber than expected. The magician's body temperature has dropped to 90 degrees. Doctors are concerned that if his temperature drops another five degrees, hypothermia will set in and he could suffer from blood clots and possibly a stroke. Another layer of dry ice is added and the temperature inside the cube drastically decreases. On day three, the cold is unbearable. The ice is frozen over, but we can still keep track of the magician's vital signs. His resting heart rate appears normal despite the frigid temperature. So far, so good. We'll just have to hope that he can survive. Day four, the ice is starting to melt. If the chamber becomes too soft, the magician will be in danger of being crushed under 13,000 pounds. Day five, the ice has refrozen. Even though the surface of the chamber is almost completely frosted over, we can see the magician on the TV monitor. Looks like he's still breathing. It's now day six and the magician is being pushed to his limits, but there's still 24 hours to go. He's so worn out, he's fighting the urge to fall asleep on his feet. Today is day seven, and now it's time to free the magician before the ice chamber becomes an ice coffin. Will the magician make it out alive? And how will he do it? Find out the secrets when Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed returns. It's day seven and the moment of truth has arrived. Time to free the magician from his icy tomb. A chainsaw is needed to cut a hole through the ice, which is two feet thick. Let's see if the magician can hold on for just a few more seconds. There he is, still moving, but even with a mask, I can tell that he's near collapse. They better get him out of there. The crew is careful not to make the hole too big or the entire ice chamber will collapse under the magician killing him instantly. From the look of him, he's already half dead. Well, black is appropriate for funerals. He could be dressed for the right occasion. The effects of the freezing temperature have taken their toll. By now, he's close to hypothermia, or at the very least, a severe case of frostbite, not to mention dehydration and exhaustion. At this point, he needs help just standing up. Although it's possible that the magician put himself into a zen-like trance, no amount of concentration in the world could protect him from the cold. Even if he survives his ordeal, what permanent damage he may have caused to his system is anyone's guess. 
Between the lack of food and drink and the absence of fresh air, his body has taken a severe beating. Remember, the Ice Age killed off the dinosaurs. What chance does a magician have? Unless he knows something that we don't. A team of doctors is on alert to provide immediate treatment. He looks like he'll need all the help he can get. The assistants are standing by, ready to take him to an ambulance that's waiting outside. They better hurry. He looks worse than we expected. Let's hope it's a slow night in the emergency room. Or will he be going straight to the morgue? I guess we'll soon find out. And there he goes. But how could anyone survive being frozen in this chamber? You should know by now that it's all just one big trick. The magician is sealed inside the ice chamber, and we are led to believe that he's facing bone-chilling Arctic conditions. He's not. In fact, your refrigerator is probably colder. As you can see, it's a mild 53 degrees inside. But even though it's not as cold as he pretends, how could anyone survive confined in ice with no food, water, or sleep for days on end? The magician will never have to find out, because conveniently there's a trap door built into the floor of the chamber. Back outside, the workers obscure our view for a moment, and that's when the magician pulls the old switcheroo. The secret door opens, a body double climbs in, and for a few seconds, there are two magicians sealed inside. Watch again, this time from both inside and out. Without the distraction of the dry ice, the entrance of the body double is obvious. The magician and his double are careful to stand close together, so it appears that nothing unusual is going on inside the ice chamber. But we know better. Then the magician drops down through the floor and the trap door closes. Another open and shut case. Once he's out, the magician makes his way to a small compartment that's hidden in the platform. Inside the compartment are all the comforts of home, a bed, food and drink, even a television to watch the live news reports covering his frozen in a block of ice trick, supposedly taking place on the platform above him. Over the next seven days, the magician and his body double will take turns standing in the ice and chilling out in the room below. But if the magician is no longer frozen in the chamber, whose vital signs are being monitored? As you can see, the assistant is doing more than watching the screen. See that gadget on her finger? It's really her heartbeat that's going pitter-patter. And there's another bit of electronic deception going on here. When the magician is replaced by his body double, a videotape of the real magician is being played back on the screen, fooling innocent passers-by. I thought they banned the instant replay. Finally, on day seven, a wide awake and refreshed magician is freed from the ice. Pretty cool, but this acting job is probably not going to win him any awards anytime soon. But one thing's for sure, he'll be back to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets. Once everything is in place, the magician starts the saw and slices through his pretty victim like a hot knife through butter. And that's really how to saw a woman in two. For his next illusion, the magician will attempt to make one of his lovely assistants go away. Although I'm not quite sure why. Is it her? No, it's this one. 
She seems ready, willing, and certainly able. First, a couple of dance moves to remind him of what he's going to be missing when she's gone. Maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. Who else is going to give him a free table dance? Here come the other girls. I sense there's magic in the air. And just like that, she's vanished. What a shame. But here's how he did it. When the illusion begins, the magician beckons his assistant to perform a sultry dance for him atop this table. This has absolutely nothing to do with the trick, but I wanted to see it again anyway. There are actually two beautiful assistants who make this trick work. One on the table, and one hiding behind the back wall, who's waiting for her cue. Although you may not see it, the secret to this trick is right before your eyes. From this angle, you can see that the table actually rests on top of a triangular compartment concealed on all sides by mirrors. These mirrors reflect the striped walls and checkerboard floor, making the compartment virtually invisible. Hidden in the top of the compartment is a trap door, also concealed by a mirror. Remember the beautiful assistant hiding backstage? She operates the trap door. How's that for convenient? The sexy dancers enter with the silk and raise it up. At that moment, the secret door is slid open. When the silk is raised a second time, the girl on the table jumps back into the opening, going down. Watch again. The door opens, she drops in, and the assistant shuts her trap, so to speak. She's gone in a flash. This really is the oldest trick in the book. Coming up, how does a woman float on the bristles of an ordinary broom or a 65,000-pound truck vanish into thin air? And could anyone really survive for seven days in a frozen block of ice? The secrets when we return. Now the magician will attempt one of the classics of magic to spending a woman in midair on the bristles of an ordinary broom. But these are no ordinary cleaning ladies. Trust me, they don't do windows either. But I'm not complaining. Nice broom work, ladies. Wonder what they could do with a vacuum. The assistants place their brooms into the platform and we're ready for the magic to begin. Here comes the magician and his next victim, right on cue. The rose is a nice touch. They say girls really fall for flowers. Let's hope she doesn't fall for him, then to the floor. She's up, and she's good. Must eat a well-balanced diet. There goes one broom. Doesn't look too comfortable. Now for number two. Nothing below and nothing above. And that's how you sweep a woman off her feet, magically. But since there's no such thing as magic, let's find out the secrets. The assistants enter and place the brooms into holes cut in the floor. No magic there. They wave their hands over the bristles to show that the brooms are ordinary. But looks can be deceiving. Examine this broom more closely and you'll see that the bristles actually conceal a steel pipe with a hole in the top. Who says showbiz isn't glamorous? But how does our lovely assistant use that pipe to Tonight, in this abandoned warehouse, this magician is going to break his solemn code and expose magic's biggest secrets. He'll reveal the incredible secrets behind making a 65,000-pound truck disappear. A death-defying escape. Slicing a woman in two with a buzzsaw. 
vanishing a beautiful girl into thin air, levitating a woman on the bristles of a broom. And for the first time, he'll reveal how a man could survive being frozen for a week in a block of ice. All tonight on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. The begins by powering up the stainless steel blade of an industrial buzzsaw. As usual, we'll begin by showing you the illusion as it is performed, then we'll reveal the secrets. To protect the identity of the magician, he's not using his regular assistants, so he can show you their faces. And here comes another one of his beautiful assistants now, all dressed up and only one place to go. But don't get ahead of me. In order to be sawn in half, she'll need a little convincing. A magic spell should do it. And just to make sure she doesn't wake up and run away, her feet will be secured in place with heavy-duty padlocks. We should remind you that this trick is very dangerous. Do not attempt it or any of tonight's illusions at home. With her feet locked in place, the ladies then shackle her wrists to the table. Snap. Fun girls. They really know how to have a good time. But they're gonna leave the dirty work to the magician. Usually the woman on the table is covered with a box. This time, you'll see the sharp stainless steel blade cut right through her body. Uh-oh, Sleeping Beauty is awake. Better use some more magic. This looks like it could be painful. Too late, the magician's got places to go and people to saw. Yikes, he's actually cutting right through her. Straight up the middle, that's gotta hurt. The girls rush in to help her out of her chains, like it matters now. How do you like that? She's none too worse for wear. Although her outfit's now a tasteful two-piece. That's how you saw a woman in two. Now let's find out the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician demonstrates that the saw blade is real. It is. Our lovely assistant enters, never looking lovelier. She's put into a bogus trance by the magician and placed on the table. Now's when the magic happens. Concealed on the tabletop is a trap door that opens to reveal a secret compartment inside. As the assistant is lowered onto the table, her midsection drops down into the compartment. But with her body hidden safe inside the table, how does she appear to lay flat on top of the bench? When the assistant enters, she's wearing a specially designed form-fitting body cast made of super thin fiberglass hidden under her dress. Some cast. Some body. The false body has been pre-cut to allow the saw blade to pass right through it. When the girl is placed on the table, her body drops through the trap door and out of the phony form and fake dress. The fiberglass form maintains her body's shape underneath the dress, and it is this fake form that is really cut by the saw. Looks convincing to me. The assistants distract us as they lock the restraints in place. Notice that one of the assistants appears to be doing something else behind the table. What you don't see is that she is really sliding in a steel plate safely separating the assistant from the form and protecting her from the very real plane to float parallel to the floor. 
Her long black gown covers more than a fabulous figure. It contains the secret. Hidden beneath her dress is a specially fitted harness that is designed to support her full weight. Starting to catch on? Under her right arm is a special connector that fits inside the top of the hollow steel pipe. Not exactly high fashion. As the lovely lady steps up next to the broom, another assistant is hidden behind her. The audience can't see as this girl quickly guides the connector into the pipe. Once it's securely in place, the magician simply picks the girl up and over the brooms. And the magical harness does all the heavy lifting. Here's how the trick and the girl would look without the dress. When you see this illusion without the cover of the gown, it doesn't look quite so magical, does it? A trick so simple, even a child could do it. It was said that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, believed that the Grey Houdini could dematerialize and pass through solid objects. Let's see if he was right. In this case, the magician will be traveling through the object. No, he's not going to take one last look at his costume before the trip. That big mirror is all part of the trick. Once again, so are the girls. The magician begins by examining a magical portal. There's a split in the center of the portal that allows him to pass his hand through. See? Apparently the opening works on both sides. Nice job, girls. The panel is secured in place over one side of the mirror. This mirror has two faces, so the magician calls for another panel. Yep, this one has a split too. Can you guess what happens next? That's right, the second panel is secured in place. The magician takes one last look behind the mirror. There he goes with those magic gestures again. It won't be long now. <laughs>